So we're going to um, stay on this because I think there's a need for it. Right? Y'all feel like there's a need for it? There's a need for it. Amen. How you know when you have hatred and anger in your heart? Because you're thinking about hurting somebody. That's usually the first sign. Or you're wishing bad on somebody. That's usually the next sign. Or you're happy when something bad happens to somebody. You're happy when a blessing falls through for somebody. You rejoice when others fail. That's a sign of hatred. Amen? And if you really have deeply rooted hatred or anger, then you lose control of yourself every now and then. That means you fly off the handle, go off, cuss folk out, and then have to apologize. That's a demon. It's a demon. And you can't be trusted. A person that's harboring anger and hatred can't be trusted. Because if you get upset, you're going to lose control and say what you've been thinking all along and severely scar somebody because you didn't know how to protect them from you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be as, the Bible says be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a what? You ain't never seen no dove cussing nobody out, jumping on nobody's back, just pecking them. Doves don't even, they, they just walk around waiting to get shot. <laughs> the doves don't do that though. Doves just chill. They just, you know, land here, land there, sing a little song every now and then. They're just a cool bird. They're harmless. They're a cool bird, but you got to be wise as a serpent as well. But you got to be harmless, as, so you can't be going off because you can't take that stuff back. Amen. You don't. I mean, me and my wife, we've had we've had our ups and downs. We've had some arguments, but we never say anything, anything that we can't take back, ever. You're not supposed to get that mad. Bringing up why you wish you had married somebody. You know you can't take that back. I wish you were somebody else. You can't take that back. Just drop dead. I wish you was dead. That's hatred. And that's self-hatred you taking out on somebody. You have to hate yourself to talk like that. Did you know that? Yeah, anybody that just fly off the handle and they have a reputation. Ooh, don't make him mad. <laughs> what? He saved too? Yeah, but he saved, but don't make him mad. Don't make him mad. Ooh. Boy, he'll just go crazy. He'll just, what? <laughs> it's demons, demon spirits, and they don't hate you. And I remember when I first learned really about self-hatred. I was talking to a guy and I was really trying to help him, giving him some good advice, really trying to help him. And I said something when I was talking to him and I mean, he manifested. And when he manifested, he started, there's something coming over me right now. Man, I don't even know what it is. And I'm thinking in my mind, man, you got a wife and kids and you can get this upset with somebody trying to help you? So I could only imagine if I was talking bad to you or something, I'm trying to help you and you manifest it. And the Lord spoke to me and said, it has nothing to do with you. He hates himself. He's made so many bad choices that his life is trash. So by you helping him, he feels in his pride that you are taking a position that you're better than him. Yeah. 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 Finally calmed him down, everything. Got him caught, whatever, then he got off the phone and just went crazy again. Just because of himself, had nothing to do with me. So if you have the can't help it's where you gotta snap somebody's head off every time you get upset, you hate yourself. There's something about you that you don't like. Can I keep preaching in here? Y'all, we're going to keep doing this don't take the hate thing until we stop taking the hate. Look at somebody and say, don't take the hate. Amen. The number's getting higher. It's four. 
4 Defcon 4 Don't take the, Don't take the hate Amen We're going to be talking about Look at somebody say the royal law The royal law, law. Adamandbeliever.com Y'all have that? Amen Okay, well we ready to move on all righty. Many today cannot be true Christians because they are carrying hatred in their hearts. I was talking to my mom. We were talking about someone who, I mean, way back when I was doing youth ministry, they were Hebrew Israelite or into the Hebrew Israelite beliefs, but it was called something. It wasn't even called Hebrew Israelite back then, but they were heavily into it and, and all of those things. And even this guy in particular carried a lot of anger and hatred in his heart. And a lot of times people, and I've said it before in here, but you know, people will gravitate toward belief systems that use hatred or anger as validation for why they exist. So the hatred of the white man, because the white man has kept the black man down, that if we can organize that, we can make a religion of that, and we can actively hate white people in our belief system. And that's wrong. Amen. Amen. A white man didn't stop you from buying them expensive shoes you wear. When you want Jordans, you go get them. And Jordan black. I don't understand. White man ain't holding nobody back. You can be whatever God wants you to be. Amen. No matter what color you are. Man, don't you believe TV? And TV will have you out there fighting a, a battle that's not even yours. Because you feel a way about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But many today, they can't qualify to even be a Christian because of all the hatred that they carry in their heart. Mark 11 and 26. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespass. Why do we gloss over this? If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Yeah, but I, I, I know, you know, folks want to put a doctrinal spin on everything. And what do you believe, Pastor? I mean, do you believe once you say, I always say, I believe that if you do not forgive, your Father in Heaven's not going to forgive you. I don't know what the technical, theological term for that is. I just know what the scriptures say. So I'm going to do my best to forgive no matter what they do to me. Because they're not worth it. The mere fact that folks are doing stuff to you ought to tell you that they don't think much of themselves. So why would I be thinking on them like that? Why would I spend my time think, worried about somebody that's not worried about themselves? Like the old folks, you say, get you some business. <laughs> Your business is all jacked up And you must hate it to be in mine My business is better than yours You like my business better than yours <laughs> Man, I, no way But I'm not going to have unforgiveness in my heart Because this scripture tells me That the Father, God in heaven Is not going to forgive me If I don't forgive Oh, but I prayed the sinner's prayer, and I came up, and they laid hands on me, and I fell out, and I puked, and I sung a song. I don't care what you did. Did you forgive? The Bible say, while you standing there getting ready, practicing your, 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 your fallout, the Bible say, put a bookmark right there and go forgive. That's what my Bible said. Go forgive. So it'll work. Just because you got knocked out don't mean it was under the power of God. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah, we can make it look pretty. Oh, and I felt electricity. And whoo, Did you forgive? Self-hatred leads to what? Hating others. The only kind of person that hates other people is someone that hates themselves. That's self-hatred. People are struggling with hating others because they feel their lives are ruined. So when you grow up and you feel that, man, if my mom and dad had sent me to college like they said, they was going to, I turned out better. No, they don't have nothing to do with why you like that. 
You're like you are because you choose to be. I, can I preach in here? None of us are, no. You chose that. Quit acting like you didn't. Amen. Life allows us that. God gives us free will to choose. Yeah. So you hate your life or feel like your life is ruined. I wonder why your life is ruined. Who ruined it? Yeah. And I know there are some situations where some folks, some crazy stuff happened to them. I'm, you know, those are, I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you had an opportunity to make a good decision and you didn't. When the word of God came to you to tell you how to make a good decision. And you push that away. You mad at the preacher for something you doing. Can I keep preaching that? Here? James 3 and 16. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and what? Every evil work. E envy and what? Strife. So be careful. Can I say this in here? What I'm about to say, y'all don't know what it is. So they're like, I don't know. But you do have a mic. <laughs> Parents, let me address you, please. Keep the envy and in strife in your home away from your children. Amen. 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 Don't put other folks' kids down. Don't put other parents down. And especially don't put members down. Amen. Because then, you, then the kids start clicking up because of what their mama said. What their daddy said. They start clicking up. And this group don't like this group. And it's always because somebody said something. And don't raise another generation of tattletales like you. I, I, hey, you know. I'm just telling you, don't do that around the kids because it's going to cause confusion. When they get a certain age, they're going to hate church. Church going to be a joke. Power of God don't really work in there because something's wrong with everybody. How you know something's wrong with everybody? Because my mama talk about everybody. I'm preaching in here. I will preach this. Keep your mouth off, folks, in here. You got to be with these people. Kids have to grow up together. Can they have a fair chance to like each other? Just because you don't like their mama or their daddy? And a lot of times it's because they corrected you. <laughs> I just don't want envy and strife in here. Because that means confusion and every evil work is going to be in here. Folks been sending me videos of churches, you know, people having praise breaks or whatever. And every praise break, praise break video is some old punk. Some old gay dude just bucking like a donkey. Hair up in a bun and afro puffs. Dudes. Suit coat come up to here. Brother, you wore the vest. You didn't wear the suit coat. That's the vest. Why you get your suit coat cut that high? And bent over. I mean, every video. And I'm like, man, I, I'd send it to some of the brothers. I'd be like, man, thank God for our church. We just ain't finna have no. No. But this is where it starts. Jezebel brings that in the church. Once the, once the number of men in here start going down and the number of women rises, that's when you start seeing that. Because strong men don't allow that. They walk up to them and say, sit down, bro. Put your coat on. That's not the coat. That can't be the coat. Put your coat on. But we ain't have that in here. Amen. We ain't letting boys walk around here effeminate, sashaying and popping gum and 
walking around with him, always got a <laughs> blowing bubbles all the time. We'll, we'll let boys do that in here. Boy, put your head down. Why your head cocked back and you blowing bubbles? We don't do that. I mean, that's not a sin. Well, we just don't like it. I don't want his head back like that, blowing bubbles. I spit that gum out. No, we just don't want the tendencies. We don't want the, 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 no. We want these men to be men. We don't want them getting out there in the world and getting tackled by the woman. Just beat down. Can't even think his own thoughts. She got to tell him what to think and when to think. He start talking, she interrupted. Well, you see, oh yeah, and then. Man, we don't have no Dwayne Wade section in here. I thought I'd just bring that up. He say, man is not the head, the woman is. That's what Dwayne Wade say. Well, we, you know, we didn't like him in 06, and we don't like him now. <laughs> Folk that ain't mad fans, they don't, they, don't, they don't understand that. No, never liked it, no. But James 3 and 6 says, for we're in it, so we gonna, we're just not going to have envy and strife, folks trying to be better, look better, want to be better, all that. And the only way to do that is to tear somebody else down. That's the only way to do that. The only way you can look better than somebody that looks better than you is to tear them down. I'm not talking about physical looks. I'm talking about they have something you don't have. People are talking about them in a way they're not talking about you. They have more likes and views than you. They drive a better car, live in a better house. They just treat people better and more folks like them. The only way for you and your ratchet self the only way is to tear them down. That's self-hatred. Tearing other folks down. We're just not going to have that kind of ministry here. Amen. Shut up. Jezebel, get somewhere. My goodness. That don't make you look better. Don't you know how bad that makes you look? Everything good happened to somebody. You got something. Well. The origin of self-hatred can be self-inflicted by our own bad decisions or caused by the actions of others. Regardless of the source. Look at somebody say, regardless of the source. It really don't matter. It don't matter if it's self-inflicted or it don't matter if you came up the rough side of the mountain. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Regardless of the source, it still produces the same kind of hatred toward others, which brings what? condemnation. Romans 14 and 22. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth what? Not himself in that thing which he allowed. Happy is the person that don't do stuff to condemn themselves. But what do you do to condemn yourself? Condemn someone else. When you condemn someone else, guess who's getting condemned? You! And the thing is, when you're talking about somebody, you're not hurting them. You can't hurt nobody. Most of them don't hear you. You at home in your house mad, and they in the park on the swings. Because I know that's where I be. My sw- <laughs> Man, I'm not sitting around thinking about you talking about me. Why will your words matter that much? And here's the thing, your words don't matter that much to you. Because you can't speak a blessing in your own house. So how you going to speak a curse on somebody else? 
the men just get mad at me and oh brother you so arrogant you just think you the stuff you just i mean i'll be like look brother go home and tell that to your wife because that's who you talking to you're not talking to me Mm-hmm. Let it get quiet. I don't care. That wasn't meant for me, brother. That's what you've been practicing in the mirror. <laughs> You're not mad at me because I ain't got nothing to you. Yeah, you fighting witchcraft. Now, I can help you fight witchcraft. You can't hate me if I'm trying to help you. Amen. Amen. Of course you didn't know she was a witch. They never do. <laughs> Amen. But don't be condemned in the thing that you are allowing. Can I preach in this house? I feel like it. Man, somebody want to leave so bad, but you can't. You have to stay. You have to. You have to hear this. The royal law, according to scripture, is to love thy neighbor as thyself. Look at somebody say, love thy neighbor, love thy neighbor. As, thyself. as thyself. Now look the other way and say, love thy neighbor, love thy neighbor. as thyself. As thy neighbor, as thyself. That's the royal law, according to scripture. We cannot condemn others without condemning ourselves in the process. So if you don't love your neighbor as yourself, you hate your neighbor as thyself. Yeah. Romans 2 and 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou, you doing what? Thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judges do the same things. I've told y'all before, in God's eyes, it's the same thing. You can't make their sin look worse than your sin. In God's eyes, y'all are all doing the same. Yeah, old church, oh man, if it was a whiskey bottle, oh, the devil done came in liquid form. <laughs> Tan your house up. Well, you talking about it, that's gossip. And in God's eyes, you and the whiskey drinker are doing the same thing. <laughs> Ooh, I know I'm preaching. Yeah, oh, oh, come, come on up here, little sister. She, we caught her fornicating. We heard she was fornicating. Come on up and confess it to the church. But the person saying it sit all the way across the church from the other mother over there. And they challenge each other every Sunday in an amen war. Because they hate each other. So in God's eyes, the fornicator and the mother feud is the same thing. Yeah. Brother Woodrow hollering at all the women in church. Speaking to them, hugging them too long. Hugging them inside their coat. Bruh, my coat was buttoned. Why did you unbutton my coat to hug me? Something wrong with him. Something wrong with him. Something is wrong. He need to go before the elders. He need to go before the elders. But one of the elders looks at pornography. Because it's digital and it's on the internet. It don't even have to be pornography. It just be Instagram women. You just looking at Instagram too hard. In God's eyes, both of them are doing what? Can I keep preaching in here? I just have to make stuff plain because folk try to get around this kind of stuff. If we do not pray for others to be forgiven 
and let go of their wrongdoing, then we cannot be forgiven and God will not receive what? Our repentance. How do you hold on to someone else's wrongdoing? Like you don't have any. Where do you find the space to put someone else's wrongdoing? That's just going to build up hate. That's the only reason you would do that. If you hold it on to somebody's wrongdoing, you hate them. You want something to happen to them because you hate yourself. Mark 11 to 25. And when you stand, pray and do what? Yeah. Forgive if you have ought against how many? Yeah. Any. That your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your church. So don't even stand and pray without forgiving. Yeah, this is why you haven't progressed. This is why your life is at a standstill. This is the brick wall you hit. God ain't listening to you. He doesn't hear you because you won't forgive. Our society is promoting the hatred of others and holding grudges even as far back as forefathers and ancestors. Folks mad because the ancestors had a hard time. Because of what George Washington did. George Wa Ben Franklin slept with a black woman. I hate him. I hate him. Well, then turn off all your power devices. Because had he not flown that kite, your phone wouldn't work. <laughs> you better move into a log cabin. If you hate Ben Franklin. <laughs> yeah, the forefathers, you done watch the internet and they made you mad at some white men that been dead for hundreds. groceries to take care of her kid. And you in there mad at her, Edomite. Sack the groceries! <laughs> you know how ridiculous that is? You crazy. You done watch TV. The BLM had you praying to the ancestors. Now here's my thing. Why they spending all that time conjuring up ancestors' powers? It didn't work for them. If it worked for the ancestors, we would be good now. Why are you? <laughs> and we call forth the ancestors. The ancestors are like, hey, we, <laughs> we failed. Bro, you better call on Jesus. He will answer prayer. We can't do nothing. Mad at your ancestors and mad at the forefathers. Go live in China for a little while. You'll start liking old Ben and George. Yes, you will. You name your child Ben. Benjamin. Benjamin Franklin Johnson. Yeah, just get me out of China, please. Because we have freedoms here because of them. Yeah, they were some masons. Yeah, I ain't judging where they went when they died. They don't have nothing to do with none of that. I'm just not going to hate them and they done gave me some freedoms. You're going to exchange their freedoms for bondage now. Because that's what hatred is. Bondage. Our 
preach in here. Man, all the way back to the forefathers and ancestors demanding justice and reparations for their transgression. I demand justice. Well, what about what you did? What if the judge had ruled against what you did when you was doing the do? Hurting folks. The spirit of unforgiveness toward race, creed, and culture is being magnified to stir up hatred in people. And people don't even realize it. All of this old black stuff and all this, you know, I mean, just all of this stuff is to make you angry and hateful in the end times so you will die and go to hell. That's the devil's goal, to get you to hell. If he can put hatred in your heart. But here's what hatred does, and God showed me this. Because I was wondering, you know, we had some, some uh, uh, hidden Hebrews in here for a little bit, you know. And God began to show me the devil puts hatred in people so they won't hear the truth. Because if you get that stuff in you, then you have to judge me for not preaching it. That's why you got to be careful who you're listening to and sitting under this word. Because I'm, listen, ooh, woo! <laughs> whoa! You better listen. You better watch it. Because when you get that second voice, that third opinion, it starts changing the validity of what I'm preaching. Starts changing how you lodged in here. And then the devil taps that hatred that's hidden in your heart. And all of a sudden, you got a problem with me. But before it happened, you didn't have no problem with me. You can't even tell people why you're really mad at me. Because you listen to that second opinion, that third opinion. It began to whir on your heart. Then the message in here starts sounding different. Then you start trying to find who in here it feels like me. So we can start us a coup and start hanging out and getting together. And it don't hurt me because you're going to, look at somebody say, you're going to be replaced. You're not going to hurt me like that. You're just going to hurt yourself. Man, you got to explain it to your kids. We don't like them no more. Yeah, but, but, but why? I thought he's a preacher. Oh, no, he's a false prophet. He's messed up. So the 10 years we were here, you were here, should we trust your judgment? Because 10 years, he was the man, and you loved him, and everything was good. And 10 years later, you're telling us not to like him. And I'm confused because I'm just a little kid, and this doesn't make sense. Yeah, but that unforgiveness toward race and creed, and you just see a white person randomly, you upset. God got to get you out of here because we have white people in here. God's going to protect them from you because you're stupid. But James 2 and I says, but if ye have respect to persons, ye what? I mean, that's just basically saying if you're a Hebrew Israelite, you in sin. If you believe the Hebrew Israelite blackness doctrine, if you in here uh, on a covert op to infiltrate, you commit sin. That's what my Bible just said. Because you believe that a people group should have a higher respect than another people group. That's called respect of persons. You believe that God likes a people group more than he likes another people group. That would be classified as respect of persons. You commit sin according to James 2 and 9. Now we're going to start taking James out and Paul out and all of that. Then you commit sin again. Because now you're a heretic. You don't believe the whole word. My Bible tells me right here, if you have respect of person, oh, but God respected Jacob more than Esau. He hated Esau. Don't you know they came out the same woman? He hated Esau for what Esau was going to do to him. Sell his birthright for some porridge. He hated Esau because of the choice Esau made. They both had the choice because they came out the same woman. They were the same race and creed coming out of the same woman. 
They may have lived in different demographics, but they was brothers. When someone hurts you and you never truly forgive them, then you have hatred in your heart. How do I know? You think about them all the time. They hurt you and you never truly forgave them. You'll know you forgave them when you can pray for them and love them. Yeah, and I ain't talking about that grinding teeth love. Yeah, I love you. I love you, yeah. yeah I love you. I had somebody tell me that one time, brother. No, I love you now. I love you. I love you. I love you. Like, how do you make love a threat? I love you now. I, I, now I love you. What you get ready to do? Cain? First John 3 and 15, whoever, whosoever hateth his brother is a what? Plain and simple. So you can't be, who? I can't believe what Cain did. If you hate your brother, you just like Cain. Cain did what he did because he hated his brother. So whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know. I mean, this is like. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. I mean, but once saved off, and ye know. The Bible said, you know now that if you hate your brother, there's no eternal life in you. You don't have eternal life in you, you're not going to make it in. Society comes to manipulate that hatred and bring up situations, circumstances, and issues that do what? Prick your heart and tap into the hatred you've been harboring. That's all the devil needs. That's why this generation is so easily manipulated by social media and whatever they put on TV. Whatever they put on there, this generation would just go for it because there's hatred in their hearts. This causes people to lash out and take the hate bait that our society is tempting them with. Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit. But in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. That means what they have. Praise God. Man, I'm so happy for you. Man, I rejoice with you. I do that. Something good happens, I'm right there. Cheering your own. Happy for you. Something good happened to me, I expect the same. I mean, hating on me. I like some of these brothers. Whenever something good happens to me, they're like, ooh, what we got now? We done came up. Look what God did for us. Yeah, that's right. We brothers. Amen. Some old witch don't want you to clap. Clap! Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to what? The interest of others. God is pleased with us when we love our neighbor as ourselves, but he rejects us when we hate our neighbors, especially when they have not truly wronged us. I understand if they came, broke in your house, and slapped you. Now that's going to take a little time in prayer. Some prayer and supplication, say if God. Maybe a fast or two. Yeah, me and the Lord are gonna have to talk about this. I'll get back with you. Yeah, so I understand that, but you just mad at somebody because of what they have, what they got, what good stuff happened to them that didn't happen to you, and you hate them because of that, or hate them because of the truth that they preach gets in the way of the lie you live in? First John 3 and 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing. Like, Y'all, this scripture gets glossed over by a lot of modern day preachers. Let's slow it down a little bit. What is this scripture saying again? And whatsoever we ask, name it and claim it, I don't think so. 
Whatsoever we ask. There's a contingency here. Let's check that out. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Be, look at somebody and say, because. Because. We keep his commandments. And do, there's another one. And do those things that are what? Pleasing in his sight. Summary! Oh, if I ain't ever preached at ABC, I preached today, didn't I, young folks? Don't you be mad about the, the, the heroes. Amen. Get delivered. Many theologians believe that God re rejected Cain because he gave the wrong offering. Oh, God showed me, Elder, this time. I got, I got the answer this time. But in my humble opinion, can I have a humble opinion? That this is in my humble opinion. God's rejection of Cain wasn't about the offering he gave at all. It was the fact that he hated his brother Abel. That was the problem. He hated his brother Abel the whole time. Wasn't just that instance that you see in the Bible. Cain hated his brother. He just hated him. You know how much you have to hate somebody to kill them and be the first killer ever? He hated him. The Bible doesn't give us much of a backstory on these brothers, but it does tell us that Cain talked with his brother and then slew him. Even after God himself addressed Cain's issue, he still hated Abel to the point of murder. Now, God is the all-seeing, all-knowing God. So when God saw sin crouching, what sin did he see crouching? Murder. Jealousy and envy can cause a person to kill his own brother or sister. No matter, how, no matter how much they claim to love them, if they are jealous or envious, they will rejoice when they fall or carry out vengeance themselves. God told Cain in Genesis 4 and 7, watch this. If thou doest well, shalt not thou be accepted. Shalt thou not be accepted. And the Bible also states in James 2 and 8, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou, sh thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do what? Ye do well. So in Genesis he told him, if you do well, well what is doing well? James 2 and 8 tells us, love thy neighbor as thyself. This is telling us that in order to do well, we must love others as we what? Of ourselves. Cain's problem was that he loved himself more than he loved Abel, and he felt that his life was worth more than his brother's. This same attitude is what is destroying people today. They hate others because they have ruined their own opportunities in life. They made bad choices, irreversible fallacies, and emotional decisions. The issues from this behavior has plagued them. And instead of doing well, they hate those that are doing things better. Hating people because of your own mistakes will cause you to make even worse decisions than the ones you are already angry about. Cain made matters worse because he didn't do well. He was not only banished, and made a wanderer, but he was marked by God for the rest of his days. He made it worse. You already felt bad. Your countenance has already fallen. Then you went and killed your brother and made it worse. So many today are spiritual wanderers because they have emotionally and mentally killed their own loved ones. Spiritual wanderers. Can't be a part of a fellowship. They're going to mess that up because they're a wanderer. It's time to forgive, people of God, and do what? Do the royal law. In order to be received by God, we must love our neighbor. How? As ourselves. Passage tells us, Genesis 4 and 10, and the Lord said, what have you done? 
The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. And when you work the ground from now on, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You're going to be broke. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. And, you know, I don't preach money messages in here. You know, I don't do that kind of stuff. But some of y'all are broke because of hatred. I say that because the Holy Spirit told me to say it. You're broke because you hate folks that have. Now, I need people that have. Bro, I'm good with the folk that have. But you hate the folks that have. And when I say have, it's not necessarily financial. You hate the folks that can help you get better. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And in the Hebrew text, this doesn't sound like what I just said. It, it, it more so sounds like God forgive me because I've done something horribly wrong. Okay, so, you know, it's more so Cain repenting because in 4 and 14 he says behold you have driven me today away from the ground and from your face I'll be hidden I shall be a fugitive a wanderer on earth and whoever finds me will kill me but look at somebody say God is merciful God is merciful, <laughs> God is merciful. Genesis 4 and 15 then the Lord said unto him not so I'm not going to let him kill you Cain even though you deserve it and it's going to force my hand to bring my son to die for it I'm still going to be merciful because he's a God of mercy amen you ought to rejoice that he didn't kill Cain because Cain is symbolic of stuff we've all done amen quit getting mad at Eve and ooh, I wish he, you'd have done it too Adam, all of them. We've all been in these situations. This is just the beginning of it all. But God forgave him and said, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain so no one would kill him. Or if anybody found him, they won't attack him. And Cain went away. But this is the worst part of the whole thing. He got forgiven, but the Bible said Cain went away. Where did he go away from? The presence of the Lord left the presence of the Lord and had to settle east of the good place, Eden. Everyone stand to your feet. It's not worth it. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to walk around with hatred. It's not worth it to hate others. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to hate yourself and harbor self-hatred. It's not worth it. You have one life to live. And if you spend that life focused on what other folks have and what other folks are doing or what somebody did to you, you will waste your opportunity. Yeah. They want to pull you out in the streets. They want you mad at the white man. They want you mad at the Asian man. They want you mad at the black folk. They want you just mad at someone. And they want to manipulate you to get you to go do things to waste your opportunity. God has come to set you free from all hatred. Amen? These messages are for a reason. If you need prayer for this, just come on up like we've been doing. Just come on up in this area. Get this off me. Yeah. I need deliverance from this. And you know a lot of self-hatred comes from just being put down a lot. And that's just crazy parroting, but sometimes people really think they're doing good by putting you down, 
because that's going to make you do better. And they don't realize the power of words, death and life are in the power of the tongue. They don't realize that your life can be driven by the negative opinions that were spoken. So somebody always telling you, you dumb, you stupid, you ugly, and you ain't going to ever amount to nothing. You just like your crazy daddy. You like your crazy mama. You just going to be this way, that way. You take these things in, these words in, and they begin to, they'll rest in you because you'll go on a plight to do better, try to be better, whatever, whatever. But you have this stuff buried inside of you. So then you see the wrong thing on TV. <laughs> they show you somebody got killed by a cop in somewhere like that don't happen all the time and like it doesn't happen with black killing white black cops killing white people but it just happens it's a big world a huge world millions and millions of people <laughs> everywhere and they show you one case oh this has got to stop this injustice you're not mad at that that tapped something that was already in you because somebody put you down. Somebody made you feel inferior. Somebody made you feel like you couldn't make it. Somebody took your confidence. And so when you saw that, you, it didn't make you mad, you just related to it. I know what that feels like for his life to be taken from him because somebody took my life through a violation, through the wrong word, through whatever it is. And the devil's just waiting for the opportunity to tap you on the shoulder, upset you, so you'll go on the wrong path of justice. Y'all, as Christians, we don't pray for that. God is the judge. Why are we trying? Why are we fighting for justice and God is the judge and we all deserve death? We pray for forgiveness and we operate in mercy and we give people another chance. Seven, 70 times seven, we forgive our brothers. So we won't be manipulated by what we're watching and hearing in this hour. Everyone bow your heads all over the building. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We glorify you, God. God, we lift you up right now, believing that you are all powerful. Believing, God, that you are the God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think like your word says. it. And Father God, we trust that your word is the truth. The Old Testament, the New Testament, every word is true. And Father, we believe that you've brought us all here to hear this message today. That this was a message of healing for us. Father God, that no matter where the hatred came from, the self-hatred, no matter what, where the bad feelings about ourselves came from, Father God, no matter what people have said about us, fingers have been pointed, what they said to us, what they told us, we only gonna tr we're only going to trust what you say, God, about us. And you made us, God, marvelously made us, fashioned us the way you wanted us fashioned. So we pray right now that all self-hatred, wherever it is in us, that you would remove it right now. We give it to you, Lord. We give you that person that spoke those negative things. We give you that person, Father God. Even if it was our mother and our father, we forgive them. But Father God, we have to just free ourselves from this. So Father, we just give it to you right now so it doesn't build up in our heart. So we don't go the way of Cain. So we won't hate our brothers, our sisters, hate one another. But God, we can love. We can love. And though our parent may have been hard on us or maybe it was a single mother and that's all she knew she was just trying her best to make us tough maybe said the wrong thing maybe our father wasn't there maybe our father was weak and emasculated and our mama ran the house whatever the case is whatever we went through God the imbalance whatever it was that caused us to feel like something is wrong with us God we rebuke that feeling right now there's nothing wrong with us if you're in us if you're in us all is right and good and we believe that right now, no matter what history says, no matter what our past says, we are good right now. And we will do well. We will do well. We will take the way of Abel instead of Cain and do well by loving our neighbor as ourselves. We'll rejoice with them when they're blessed. Father God, we'll celebrate with them when good things happen. Father God, 
We will do well. We will love them in spite of. And we thank you, Lord. Continue, God, right now to give us truth in this area. To help us get over this. For some of us, it's been too many years of carrying this. So, Father, release us right now. Come on, lift your hands up. Release it right now in the name of Jesus. God, I want to feel it fall off me. I want to physically feel it drop off me. Self-hatred be gone off my life, out of my life right now. I want it to fall. I want it to fall like scales when Paul could not see. Father God, let it fall off me right now in the name of Jesus. A supernatural move of your power right now because the truth has been spoken. So let it fall off me. Every negative thought, every negative image, every negative thing that we think about, the thing that keeps us up at night, the thing we see when we look in the mirror, whatever that negative thing is that was spoken on us, that was given to us by behaviors of others, Father God, we speak against it right now, that it would fall off us and exit our lives from this day forward. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we let it go. We let it go. We let it go. We don't have to compete with anyone. You have blessings for us. We don't have to, Father God, look upon what others have enviously. You have what you have for us. Father God, you made us and you blessed us. And for that, we thank you and we give you glory and honor. Thank you, Father God, for deliverance from self-hatred right now. We celebrate you for deliverance from self-hatred right now. In the name that is above every name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and hug somebody and say, no more self-hatred. No more self-hatred. Say, God took my self-hatred so I can love you right. God took my self-hatred so I can love myself. God took the self-hatred so I can walk in freedom and deliverance and not be bound by the opinions of others. In the name of Jesus. Some of y'all, your body is being healed right now because you were holding self-hatred in and it was causing a disease in your body. But God is healing your body just because of how you feel about yourself. No more self-hatred in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise in here. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Elder. Hallelujah.